so thank you everyone for joining us for this Cherry Live. If you're um, new to this series, uh, Cherry Health is physician network and healthcare network across Canada. Um, on Cherry Health, you can see different jobs, opportunities um, all across the board in Canada from locum, permanent, telehealth, you name it, um, and, and work with those folks who are hiring those people directly. Um, what we're doing with this Cherry Live series is tackling some of the topics that are important for healthcare professionals, whether it's around recruitment, technology, innovation, um, pharma, you name it, those topics that are hot buttons or big topics that need to be discussed, we'd like to have those conversations here. Um, all of these conversations are recorded and available on demand on uh, from the Cherry Health website. So feel free to join us there. Um, in the events tab, you can see previous recordings um, or previous talks and tackle other um, topics and, and get into other resources as well. So Without further pause, today we're going to get into some what we call the Recruiting 101 series. This will be um, a number of sessions over the course of the next couple of months that we'll be releasing. Um, this is going to be the more conversational version versus on the in our resources. We'll also be doing some very step by step um, guides and um, and videos that can cover certain tools, a certain particular aspects of recruitment, um, and certain specific skill sets or specialties. Um, this one today, we'll be focusing a little bit more on the foundation of recruitment, how to really understand what motivates people, um, why they choose the jobs that they go to and stay, why they quit, how you can build that foundation um, within your clinic or workspace, um, and then why it's important to demonstrate that to the public very effectively and how you can do so. We'll go all the way up to um, creating and posting um, a job today. Um, in our future sessions, we're going to get into, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold today, so a little bit raspy, but in those future sessions, we're gonna get into active and proactive search. So how to really identify those those networks, get in there, ask for referrals, how to take some of those headhunter approaches, um, et cetera. And then we'll dig into how to onboard people and throughout that onboarding process and retention strategy. So that's what you can look forward to seeing in the Recruiter 101 series. Um, and those additional resources like guides, like hot links to some of the sites we're going to be talking about, et cetera, will be available um, on the Cherry Health website as well in, um, in the resources guides. So for some of that more detailed um, links and such, please go um, and check that out in the events page or in the resources page, and you can tackle them there. In today's session, um, we're going to be focusing on some slides and I'll walk through the conversation. But if you have a question at any time, don't hesitate to pop it into the Q&A section and I'll try to address it in real time if it's aligned to that particular topic. Um, if I don't address it right away, it's because I might be covering it or because we'll really address it in the open um, forum point at the end. We'll, we'll save at least 15 minutes to dig into some of your questions and some conversation um, at that point where you can be unmuted and, and have some conversation there. So. Without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to dive in. All righty. So I think you should be able to share my see my screen. Um, all right. So today's reality. I think probably with this audience, this is something that I don't need to uh, don't need to dig into uh, in too much detail. I'm sure all of you are very keenly aware of the challenges that we're facing in today's um, physician recruitment and healthcare recruitment scene um, due to critical shortages prior to and during COVID and post COVID that we're facing. Um, we're experiencing physicians leaving um, the profession. A Blue Ivy Group um, survey done in December of 2022, so just as you know, people were back to work and such, identified that seven out of 10 medical professionals were considering leaving their jobs or the profession completely in the following year, so during the course of this year. So, you know, I think we, we've seen that happening. We've seen people resigning or scaling back their hours and their workload drastically. Um, as the as COVID, um, you know, 
I, I don't even want to say it ended, but as we move past COVID a bit and into the course of this year, the reason for that is people are facing extreme burnout, um, inability to balance um, their work and their life, et cetera. Um, and, and ultimately they themselves need to, to recoup after having gone through this experience as well. We're also seeing massive workload issues where, you know, sometimes it's like technology, um, the administrative tasks, et cetera, are really bogging physicians down with uh, what the work that needs to be complete. And time seems to be a commodity that none of us have enough, enough of, but especially when you're trying to juggle seeing patients, charting, uh, running a business, et cetera, those time constraints can become even more acute. So we're seeing those workload issues become really, really dire um, in this space, forcing people to you know, reconsider how they want to manage their careers, manage their businesses, and ultimately remain in the profession. So with that in mind, uh, you know, I think we, there's certainly things that we can talk about in, in the state of affairs today and, and how that this needs to be addressed as from political perspectives, from immigration perspectives, et cetera. But today we're just going to dive into what is in your control today and what you might be able to start um, implementing within your own workplace, within your own recruitment practices that can have an impact with what's, what's, uh, with what's in our own control. Why do we do it? So when you see that alarm clock, um, why do you get out of bed in two states? One, either that state of, you know, I'm happy to go to work. I'm happy to get the day going. I'm really looking forward to what I'm going to be tackling today and what I'm going to be able to do. Or maybe not so much where maybe you're not quite as uh, driven to get out of bed. Maybe you're not quite as excited to get to your workplace um, and tackle what's what's coming your way. When people are considering what it is that does motivate them um, and why people do it, there are some fundamental core values around work um, that motivate people. I think these are really important to know because as we are considering our own workplaces and the workplaces that we create for those around us, um, if we want more of these physicians to join, stay and engage, we need to be really, really aware of the things that motivate them and the reasons that they're, they're showing up on a regular basis. One that we can't get away from is financial security. This is the number one motivator for most of us, unless you've won the lottery at some point and have you know financial security, um, <laughs> unlike most of us. In today's more um, challenging times and interesting times, financial security is something that motivates most people for the reason that they show up to work. Interestingly, it is a negative driver for most people showing up to work. It's, it is not something where that motivates people in a positive way. It comes typically from a scarcity mentality or a need um, versus a, a motivator for showing up. Some of the others that will follow are those positive motivators that um, encourage people to want to have a job and to want to keep showing up. Those people that win the lottery, why do they still want to keep a part-time job or do something? One of those is connection. This is a very positive driver. Um, humans are very social creatures. There's a lot of research that shows that having a friend at work um, or connections at work are really, really critical for people's mental health, for people's ability to keep showing up and for people's overall wellness. And so when we think about how we can drive connection in the workplace, thinking about how we can control people's ability to interact with each other, to have those positive interactions and how we can influence those positive interactions are a major driver um, for why people show up. Contribution to a bigger goal and having meaning in one's life is, is very important. And I think when we look at the healthcare space, there's you know a few places where this is more true. People want to feel as though they can contribute to the, the bigger the bigger issues in society and having positive meaning on other people's lives. Um, you know, I think we're, we're very lucky that, that this is such a, a core motivator for human beings through, you know, the challenges that we face in our workplaces that people keep showing up, especially in the healthcare industry. When it comes to personal growth, we are also, um, we don't know why, but humans have a behavioral, cognitive and developmental drive um, that is innate in us to learn and keep growing in our lives. We see that when folks stop feeling as though they are 
learning and growing um, that they stop to have that connection to wanting to show up and to feeling purpose um, within their own lives. So helping folks to understand that true purpose and or that personal growth that they can receive through coming to work and being a part of the organization are innately valuable when, when considering why people show up and how to keep them. And then there's application. It's one thing to be constantly learning. It's another thing to be able to apply what you're learning and apply how you're growing um, to the workplace where you operate. Uh, people desperately want to apply that and practice everything that they're learning on that ongoing basis um, and, and be able to bring that to their workplace. Why do we quit? So, you know, we've just talked and mentioned that seven out of 10 people are considering leaving their professions in the healthcare space this year. Many of those requirements um, for people are higher financial needs. Uh, when we look at the stats around what people look at uh, around jobs, whether it's locum or permanent, financial um, perspectives are really, really important. They are our number one driver. Um, rising cost of living, especially in many urban centers across this country, are forcing people to become more critical of the financial implications of their job and how they need to align that with their living expenses. But, you know, it is not necessarily that number one driver once you hit a certain threshold. However, it is very, very important. Feeling a disconnect with the company mission and values. I mean, we've just spent time talking about how people really want to feel as though they're they're creating value, they're part of something bigger than themselves. And when the company's mission and vision or values are disconnected from what that person is hoping to be able to achieve um, and what that person sees themselves bringing as value, then they are more likely to disconnect and start looking elsewhere for a place where that company mission is more aligned with theirs. I think we all know some of those people. Um, we joke about how you drank the Kool-Aid and things like that often, um, where there is a lot of company core values and core culture integrated. But the truth is, is, is where there is that strong connection to a mission and the values, then retention and attraction becomes much, much more uh, real and effective and possible. And so, you know, putting this into play is, is really, really important. Work-life integration. So some people call it work-life balance. Some people call it work-life integration. I think work-life integration is um, a term that is a little bit more, is becoming more common. People understand that with technology and with the, the needs of their lives that work is going to flow sometimes outside of certain boundaries or parameters. Um, but does that also go the other way? If a person has to go and pick up a child, if a person has to, um, you know, deal with a personal issue, is can that be accommodated the way that the expectation of accommodating business requirements are? Um, you know, I think too often it can tip drastically into the perspective that the that the work and the requirements of the business uh, trump all else. And that's where you typically see people quitting where it's there's there's that lack of um, integration and balance. Although I, I highly doubt many people in this profession would say that they're looking for full balance. That being said, we know that especially um, for caregivers, whether it's children, family, parents, etc., cetera, um, people are putting a emphasis on being able to manage their personal lives and manage their careers with that in mind. So whether that's looking at more remote work, more locuming versus jumping into owning a clinic, you name it, some of these are the reasons why people are more motivated to take on some of those types of work. Um, disconnect with the leader, you know, a person's boss. That is one of the number one reasons why people are are leaving uh, their current jobs and why they choose to pick a different employer or location. So I think we cannot stress enough the importance of strong leadership, building those relationships and strong management in a in a collaborative and um, an effective way. In today's, in today's workplaces. Obviously, there are things outside of our control as an employer, such as a person's change 
or in life. Uh, maybe they need to move locations. Maybe there's retirement, etc. We see that quite often, um, as well as you know the different the different aspects that just happen in life that are going to force people to change that you'll never be able to control. That being said, I, I think that the, the reasons that people are leaving and moving, those actually make up a quite small portion of what we're seeing in today's, in today's world. We know recognition is ultimately very critical and does fall somewhat under that leadership as well as mission and values, and then developing um, personal development and advancement opportunities. So, you know, we see that these really, these trends really do follow why people work and when those things aren't present or whether it is a disconnect with those, people are choosing to leave. In the situation that we're at with physicians where there is a mass of opportunities, the level of um, patience or the level of commitment when these things are not present or are falling apart, um, is becoming lower and lower. Um, we've seen this in industries from the beginning of time in these hard to fill roles. Uh, myself as a recruiter for almost the last 15 years, I have worked within oil and gas, within the beauty industry, within finance, within um, Alberta Health Services for many years or for a few years um, in talent acquisition these hard to fill roles, this is not something new and unique to the medical industry. Um, these challenges for filling hard to fill roles ebb and flow within, within almost any industry. And when the, um, when the talent is as scarce as it is today, their ability to be more and more um, picky about these issues becomes um, you know, more prevalent and, and they get to be making those decisions more easily. What does that mean for us as employers um, and for those who are creating these environments? You know, I might be dating myself a little bit, but for many on the call, hopefully uh, you remember the movie Field of Dreams um, and, you know, the, the saying of build it and they will come. I can't promise that, you know, if you create the ideal workspace that it's going to be easy to hire physicians but I can say that without doing so, it will be almost impossible. And when you do start to create the environment and set the stage for um, those facets that are the most important for physicians and for any employees, then it will become easier and you will be competing um, on the stage. In these hard to fill positions, um, in these industries across across the board, we've seen that those who do not adjust with the time do fall behind and do not even compete remotely for the talent. And I don't mean that as a scare tactic, but I think it is a truth that um, that clinics and different employers have to face that the status quo of how physicians um, and healthcare professionals were employed in the past, um, five, 10 years, 15 years ago is not going to work in the next five, 10 years, maybe even in the next year or two. Um, not only have, has the demographic themselves changed, um, you know, the, the newer generation of physicians are looking for something different. And that was pre COVID. Um, that was, that is an entire generational shift that we're seeing where, focus on work-life balance, focus on being able to um, manage one's mental wellness um, and access to mental wellness care uh, and time to be able to practice mental, you know, personal self-care. Those are becoming more and more important as well as personal development, as well as ongoing advancement, et cetera. These are becoming more important. Um, and for those employers who don't embrace those changes, um, they just, they aren't able to compete to bring in, to bring in the resources. Some of the things that matter most in the, in the roles that we're seeing being filled most effectively and most quickly, um, I'll go over a few of them. And again, these, these bullets and these resources are going to be available, um, following this call as well. Um, but 
flexible work hours. And that isn't to say that someone's, you know, wanting to come and go as they please, but ability to uh, manage one's schedule according to one's life is becoming more and more important. Um, you know, I think we're seeing in medicine, um, based on the most recent, recent survey by the CMA, that the physicians entering the profession are actually majority uh, female as general practitioners, especially, and their requirement for flexibility, whether it's childcare, parental care, et cetera, as caregivers, um, is higher than we've seen potentially 5, 10, 15 years ago by those who are the predominant uh, in-practice physicians. So with that, that flexibility of work hours around people's um, lives is really, really important. And while we know we have to run practices when patients can also get there, um, I think being aware that this is a request that we're seeing come up more and more and more and that is showing up in different creative ways in organizations is really, really important. The balance of in-office and remote work hours. So can a person do their charting and do part of their work from home? Can, do they have to be in clinic um, for the full work period that of, of that week? Um, these different flexible options are becoming more and more common and, and we're seeing those positions being filled more quickly. Effective use of technology. So this is one where we are seeing locum roles, especially, uh, being filled at drastically different times to fill than um, where there is good technology and where they can illustrate that the technology is well utilized versus the ones that don't have that in place, where there is legacy technology or older technology um, and, and where there is no mention of training or onboarding or support in using that technology, where that is, where that's highlighted and where there's some uh, support there. Um, people are taking those positions more quickly. So, I mean, if you're a locum and you're only going to be there for a couple of weeks, you're, you're hoping that it's as smooth technology wise as possible. Um, so, you know, selecting good technology and then implementing it well within the team and within the organization is really, really important. Adequate, reliable and well-trained staff um, to make up the overall team. This goes for the administrative staff that are there to support and, and work with the physicians, but this also goes to that team-based type of care uh, models, we're seeing that where there is a highlight on, you know, the administrative and support team, as well as broader team-based care, those roles are being filled a bit more quickly. I think physicians are really excited and know that where there is often some of those larger, broader teams, or at least access to some of those teams or that information and that those resources, um, that those are positions that are being filled more quickly. Um, adequate time for charting and administrative tasks is really important and, and needs to be outlined. I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to say it because it's, it's a trend that we're seeing, but signing bonuses, um, compensation, split models that are, that are different. You know, I'm not saying there's a one size fits all or that cash is king. However, um, there, you know, these need to be described so that people can make fair decisions and the positions where compensation is um, represented in job descriptions in, in, the, um, in the overall material, they are filling more quickly. Also, we're seeing some really interesting, when I talk about sign-in bonuses, I'm gonna, I'll highlight some of the outliers just so that we're aware of them, but we're seeing organizations give away Teslas to come join they're doing signing bonuses. Maybe the community is involved to create a signing bo bonus and a retention bonus. Um, but often it can also be in the form of accommodation provided. That's good accommodation, you know, where that's highlighted what that accommodation is like um, and that you will be comfortable. And this is how we'll welcome you into the community. And this is how you'll be supported while you're here. So yes, the cash, the signing, the interesting innovative ways of compensating someone those are those are showing up however there's also other ways to um you know let a person know they can come to your community um stay in a you know in a great accommodation have support from the community and and really enjoy their time there and feel as though that piece is taken care of um so that they can come and practice 
Um, and then onboarding support. We're seeing that the organizations that identify what that onboarding is going to look like, that can talk a little bit about joining the team and what that feels like, um, they are seeing positions fill more quickly as well. Um, ultimately, we're seeing a, a strong trend to, towards a focus on company culture being an ability to close where where companies are closing jobs more effectively. There has been that uh, focus on company culture and what it's like to work here and, and why you would want to come join us. Um, and then finally, that ability to um, give feedback and be a part of the organization and the team and the way that it operates. This could be, hey, you know, it's my feedback um, accepted and and you know encouraged around technology do people want to hear about new technologies that perhaps we've 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 been bringing in um, to bring their clinic forward and that kind of thing so allowing people to have a say in how things are managed and what happens next does tend to um, help people want to join and then also stay so we've talked about setting the stage and what some of those key motivators are for people um, as they're considering joining or as they're considering participating in an organization. The next is spreading the word. I think what we're seeing a lot of right now is um, there are you know, different tools available and all that kind of stuff, but there are some key foundations that people need to consider. One is having a website, um, a website that is your calling card. It is that that place that, that people can see and connect really quickly with that mission, vision, the values, why you're doing it. Many websites are um, very patient centric and, and that's great. I think that often a physician can feel what it would be like, like if they can see the way that you consider caring for the patients. However, um, you know, I think it goes a long way to have some language and some space on your website also for what it's like for a physician to join, um, what type of open roles there are, and what it looks like for a physician to be a part of your organization. So really putting your best foot forward on a website is, is really critical right now. Job boards and networks. You know, there are job boards in every province. There are networks like Cherry Health, where you can post your position um, and talk about your company. What I would say is, you know, there is no silver bullet for recruitment right now in this type of shortage. And maybe there will be that one physician who's looking at that one job board, the provincial job board, and it's, you know, a more simple resource. Maybe they're only looking on Cherry Health. Regardless, um, you know, it is important to have that message in mul on multiple sites and in multiple networks um, to get the message out there. I can't wait for the day where we can say that there's one place where we can really tell you that, you know, post here and it'll it'll get filled. Um, but in today's market, I think it is important to still hedge your bets and post it in multiple places. As I mentioned before, there will be some resources um, that we already do have published and additional ones to come around different provinces and some of the top pages um, or resources that exist for that particular province for posting your job. So you can always take a look on the Cherry Health website in the resources and find some of that material there. Social media, you know, I think it's really funny to look at the world and how um, other countries, um, you know, network and connect the healthcare industry. Today in Canada, you know, uh, Facebook's still pretty dominant. So we kind of joke sometimes that Facebook Facebook is still sort of the, the backbone of the Canadian medical system. And we hope to we hope to disrupt that and be able to kind of create something that's bespoke to the healthcare industry. However, you know, there are those Facebook groups Instagram, I'm seeing more and more organizations um, sharing on Instagram about the opportunities that they have avail available and why join, et cetera. But social media is really, really important um, for meeting physicians where they're at in those different spaces. And then networking and events. Are you empowering the members of your team to spread the message about what jobs are open? It could be the administrators. It could be you know, anyone within the organization, within the, within the broader team, do they know that you're hiring? Do they, do they know that if they were, you know, hanging out in the grocery store line and someone behind them said, oh, you know, they were chatting and they said, oh yeah, I'm a physician. I'm new to Calgary. Would that person know to say, hey, we're hiring? And would they know how to be able to connect them um, 
with either the site where you have it posted through some uh, a business card or some material, or would they be able to direct them to your website? You name it. Um, but do they know? And so, you know, leverage your, te your team, make sure that they're aware. There are networking events. There are gosh, those, those big medical events, et cetera. And, and they do serve a purpose and there's definitely an opportunity to meet people there, but ultimately um, making sure that you're enabling your team um, and that they're able to, to help spread the word for you. Now, when it comes to spreading the word, I'm gonna get us all to just take a second and, and look at this image. And I want you to tell me how quickly you could imagine yourself on this beach. You know, can you feel the sand between your toes? Can you imagine the temperature of the water? Could you imagine sipping a pina colada on that beach and what it would be like to be there? And, you know, would you start putting your pennies away for it and planning to be there just from that picture and what it's telling you? Now, how about this picture? The reason that I point out the difference here is because the way that you put yourself forward in your job postings, on your websites, et cetera, that is that difference. Are you telling, you know, if you've spent the time to create a great culture, to understand what motivates people, to understand why they want to be there and try and build that internally, make sure that you are selling that picture. Make sure you're painting it in Technicolor. Um, you know, when we look, let's start with job titles. When we look at the job titles on the, on the postings that are present, whether it is on the Cherry Health site, whether it's in newspaper ads that we've seen, whether it's on the provincial sites, it doesn't matter. Anywhere and everywhere, we are seeing, you know, some really great job titles occasionally. And then we're also seeing, um, you know, a job title like family physician, sometimes just doctor, period. Um, and, you know, this is your opportunity to put yourself forward in a in a certain light and to really paint the picture of what it's like to to work at at your clinic within your team etc those are some job titles these are some job descriptions you know um job description family physician <laughs> job description um join six other doctors in downtown toronto at least they've got the emr and, you know, and what that model is, a little bit of information there, maybe job description, family physician, holiday coverage. It's a pretty bleak, a pretty gray uh, representation of what it would be like to work within your team, within your organization, um, and be a part of, of what, why someone would want to join there. I've highlighted here an example um, that I think does a, a relatively good job of this. You know, there the focus here is paint the picture in Technicolor. So having images matters. Not every site is created equally in being able to, you know, put images about your community or about your practice, but where where it can use it use it to its its best ability. Um, you know, we've seen that those postings with images are far more likely, and I mean really far more likely, to have engagement and to garner um, inquiries. So put those pictures on there, whether it's of the clinic, whether it's of the community, whether it's, you know, you name it, uh, put the pictures up there. People want to imagine themselves in that spot. Then there's the highlights of the particular opportunity going over some of the, you know, who are you servicing? What community is this? Um, who are the typical patient demographics that they're going to be seeing? And what does a day in the life look like in terms of responsibilities? What requirements are there? And then let's get into some of the compensation information, um, you know, and, and paint as broad of a picture as you can. 
I think if I was just looking at this posting, I would say what's slightly lacking is some of the community information, um, highlighting what the team dynamic is like, what's the culture really like. However, I know that on the platform that this is posted on, on Cherry, they are able to highlight some of that stuff on their clinic page. If you can't do that on a platform where you're posting, put it into your job description. Highlight a day in the life, really what it's like to be a part of the team. Is it collaborative? Is there a, you know, a, a joint approach to care? You name it make sure to put those things in, in your job descriptions. Again, we'll have resources available um, in Cherry, on the Cherry website that can help step you through this by step-by-step, step. Um, but ultimately knowing, and you can also look at other postings that are up, you know, compare yourself to, the, to your neighbors and make sure you're trying to set the bar higher and higher versus, versus not, because they are truly going to, going to move past you. Otherwise, there's also chat GPT, that you can use for creating some of the stuff, depending on how tech savvy you are and whether that's something, a tool that you'd like to use. Um, and then finally, asking doctors why they work there and other team members. Why do you work here? Why did you choose to be here? And pull those nuggets of gold from the team members of why they chose to come there. Maybe it's about the community. Maybe it's about the clinic itself. Maybe it's about their team members. Highlight those pieces and, um, and make sure that they're present in that job posting. Planning. So, you know, we can all have the best intentions and we can all create really excellent, um, you know, postings and such. And don't get me wrong, I know planning ahead isn't always an option. If someone quits last minute or, you know, you have a locum need come up last minute, um, or you have been planning ahead and it's been posted for a while. I completely appreciate that these are issues that, that, that are, completely um, realistic. However, um, if you know someone's going to be retiring in the next year or two, now's the time if to start to start posting and start planning to post. Um, we are seeing on average, I mean, time to fill in Canada for physician opportunities is incredibly difficult to get accurate information on. Um, the roles are not apples to apples, right? You know, a rural position is going to be infinitely more difficult than an urban position in a, you know, in Calgary, in Vancouver, in Toronto. Those are easier to fill. However, um, when we are comparing oranges to oranges, and it's, you know, within a similar community, the role is similar um, and the compensation is similar, um, It's it comes down to, the culture, the team, the overall mission and vision of the organization, and then how they demonstrate it. You could have all of that. And if you don't tell people about it, they are not going to join, but planning ahead. So right now on average, some of the average statistics that we see is that filling a permanent physician job in, and I'm just, I'm going to talk mostly about the urban type locations right now. It can be 12 to 18 months to post that, to fill that job, even in some of your um, best locations. And, uh, you know, in complete honesty, of course, there's many jobs that are in good locations that are in good clinics that are still going unfilled. But when all the pieces are put in place and someone is recruiting full time on it, it can still take 12 to 18 months. Um, locum is a little bit different. Um, we are seeing locum positions being filled between, you know, 48 hours and a week. Um, in certain circumstances, I think, again, it comes down to how you are putting the position forward, what you're informing people about the position and how easy you are making it for them to, to pick up that, that shift and to be able to participate with your, with, with your team and, and connect with your team. So I think we're seeing those positions fill more quickly. However, you know, for those slightly longer term locum jobs, maybe it's a mat leave coverage, et cetera. Um, six months, people are planning ahead. They want to know where they're going to be next summer. They want to know where they're going to be, you know, and planning for those longer term um, locums is part of a six month um, planning session for, for a lot of people. Um, you know, I think, an aspect here of planning ahead too is strategically where possible using locums um, to fill that pipeline for permanent opportunities. So if you know you can have locums working within your clinic or learners within your clinic to fill that pipeline, they and they have a great experience, 
they are very likely to be champions who can either generate referrals when you are hiring or that they themselves will consider um, joining the organization. We see that about 73% of physicians stay where they graduated or where they had their very first, um, where they started practicing first in that first two years. And so bringing on learners and focusing on locums as a pipeline to hiring permanent um, is really, really important. And having both of those postings up at a time can help you um, cover both of those bases. So in summary, you know, what things can you focus on? You know, what is in your control? Uh, ultimately build and know the foundation of, of why people come, why people want to be a part of an organization and what motivates them to show up day in, day out um, and build that within your culture, within your team and within your own company's vision and mission. Technology matters. People are, are going and staying where there is technology and support that helps them buffer down some of those drastic administrative tasks. Um, know that there is no silver bullet and you're going to have to spread the word. Um, also, you're going to have to sell it and paint that opportunity in its full color and dimension. And then finally, I do want to highlight that recruiting successfully is challenging and very time consuming. I think something that goes you know, unsaid is that in most industries where the need to recruit is so critical, there are recruitment teams. And often within clinics and within healthcare teams, this is done off of the side of uh, a very busy person's desk and that they are trying to, to get this done. And they're not a professional recruiter. Um, they're not an HR person. They're often an administrator or a physician themselves who is trying to tackle this. And so, you know, I can't stress enough how I appreciate that this is a heavy lift and that, you know, it takes a lot of, I, I mentioned a lot of things just in this first session that take a lot of time and effort to create. However, it is, it is what it is today in the need for um, talent and the urgency around talent and the scarcity um, that we can't get away from saying that putting up that one liner is very rarely, if ever going to satisfy um, what people are looking for anymore. And so that time is something that does need to be carved out. Um, also, if you get a nibble and you don't jump on it within a 24 hour period, it will be gone and someone else will have. And so that time and urgency and um, is, is really, really is there. And so I can't stress that enough. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I know we're already at 1044. I'm going to stop sharing and um, open it up if there are any questions for this final um, few minutes of the call today. So again, you can pop any questions directly into the Q&A section um, and let us know if there are also, within that Q&A um, portion, you can also let us know if there are any additional topics that you, that you really, really wanna hear about, that you really want us to dig into. We will be going into specific tool demonstrations and um, and usages in the future, very, very clear step-by-steps on different types of tools and different types of um, practices. We will get into the next steps as in um, proactive search and tackling, getting to those passive job seekers. We will also get into onboarding and retention strategies in these future sessions. But if there's something that's, you know, that you really wanna hear about, please let us know in that Q&A section um so that we can tackle it in a future call um and then also after today's session you will uh receive follow-up thanking you for joining and, and sending you the uh recording in case you missed it or want to pop back to any section uh, you can respond directly to that email with any recommendations or with any topics that you'd also like us to cover so i'll pause there are there any questions any final comments before we jump out of today's call. And again, my name is Alita. Um, I lead growth and partnerships at Cherry. If there's anything you want to know more about Cherry Health as well, please don't hesitate to um, either join the network and connect with me on Cherry Health or to um, to follow up to the email that you'll get after this and you'll be connected directly with me with any questions you might have about using the tool, about us as Cherry, Whole, uh, Cherry Health as a whole as well. 
All righty. Well, I think we're going to stop there today, everyone. Um, thank you for participating and joining us today and look forward to chatting with you again soon in the next Trey Life.